Okay, now it's my turn. I hope you're prepared for an hour of <laughs> of running CVA CVA six. Okay, so I'm Mario. You know it. We, I will do the the simulation and the video if I have time. Probably not. So I will go at as fast as I can. Okay, so in order to this is more or the same as Mike has explained. First, we have to clone Corfabrief and. The, the, mo the most important thing is that you have to do it on the CVSX dev branch because on the master, we don't have everything for CVSX. So we will need to synchronize it, but until it happens, just go for our development branch. I just want to say that no submodel is required for Core Fiber Reef. I don't know if Mike has said that, but we don't have any submodels. We're a little bit opinionated about submodels, so we try to avoid them on Core Fiber Reef. Yeah, the documentation of, of CVA6, Mike explained some, I mean, the standard way to do it. That's how our course don't do it. But for CVA6, we have more of a special thing that we have it inside our folder CVA6. Under CVA6 and documentation, we have verification plans, which use BBTool. I will uh, explain it later. And the UVM structure diagram. It eases for someone that doesn't know the infrastructure of US, if CVA6 to understand everything. Just to mention, we also have a user manual that are more like core specifications than quick start guides, as Mark has said, but we are working into improving that. So we will try to more or less synchronize the way that we do on CVS things than uh, and we will do it the same way that the other course does. So just to mention, we are using BP tool, which is an in-house tool from Thales, it's open source, and we are trying to test if it could fit to standardize a way of verification plans. Because some people like to do verification or test plans in Excel, but guess what? Excel is not it cannot be tracked by, I mean, it can be tracked by Git, but it's like a binary. It just messes everything up. So we are trying to adapt ourselves to the tool which uses YAML perfectly for Git. Now it's, it will be a little messy. We have, we don't, we're not using right now uh, the, norm, the normal, the way that Mike has explained of Mac files. We will try to do it. But until then, we're using a Python script. We always do Python scripts. They are enormous, many, many parameters. That's the case. That's why we want to improve a little bit our setup. We want to shift, or at least to clean a little bit the code, because right now it's not as good as it could be. So we, if we were to find the CVA6 Python script, we have to go into the same directory under CVA6, and then there we will have the CVA6 Python, which is like the entry point to, to execute everything. So um, as Mike has said, we are controlling a lot of things. The, um, the infrastructure clones a lot of repos. So with that, we are using a lot of environment variables, or it, they can be used. If you don't <laughs> use it, it will use the default parameters of the repo that has defined. But we can, we can change that to get our RTL or branch or wherever. As you can see, there's lots of them. I mean, we're cloning many, many repos, many, many repos, so you can change whatever. Mm. Yeah. And there we have, I mean, we have readmes all, all over the place on the repository, so you can see on each folder what this is about. On CVA6 main folder, we also have a readme of some of the essentials that you need to know in order to execute, in order to see what we have out CVA6. Also, as CV6 has many parameters, and we will see if I, we see the video, we have many bash scripts, oh no, bash scripts again, to that call CV6 Python script. Long, enormous scripts, which call all of the tests, uh, hello world, we do, we do have benchmarks, I say test, Ryzen, Linux. We have all of this set up in order to run it, uh, run it as a one-liner. And it will get everything that it needs. As I, as I said, the, the repo clones everything. So you will get Verlator, if you want Verlator, Spike, Redshift Test, ReFiveDB, everything. As it happens with the Mac files, the, um, the simulation progress is heavily, heavily transparent. It's a one-liner that makes everything for you. In the case of CV6, it gets sourced a lot of bash scripts that clones everything. As I've said, we would like to shift, or at least to make it even clearer for the user. Because right now, it's heavily coupled with the, with the simulators that we're using, but we want to standardize the thing as we are doing for the other, for the other processors. As Mark has explained, we have many, many steps. I will skip it. Mark, Mike has explained already. 
So next. Okay. So now it's important. If you don't do anything, the the the, the core will be cloned. But when when disclaimer, I don't recommend it. Right now the hash is a little bit outdated, so I think it will not compile. Better clone yourself the repo and be sure to have record sets of models because it has many of them. RTL has a lot of things that it gets from it gets from another repos. So better to clone it yourself. As I, as I say, I haven't put everything because I mean it, it will be like three that says lights to see what what happens on all the the the, the, the clones. I probably you you will not say it, but the the one liner with CVA six Python script it's quite huge. This is for you, what you need to compile hello world test. But all the tests are also inside our bash scripts. So if you want to compile CV, um, hello world test, you could, could find this one-liner inside our regress folder that I have said earlier, that we have all the one-liners one one, 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 one to ex execute everything. It has to be said that all the outputs of the simulation got, gets, uh, gets in the out deposit repository, out, out folder inside sim folder of CVA6, which uh, has a simulator at the end. If you run two simulations of the same binary the same day, it will erase the other. But it's it's it. This is this is, I mean, this is done on purpose, not to have many many log files. That if you're running the same test one again and again and again, you if if we're not doing this, you will have many many files that probably you will need to erase sometime. Okay. So as as Mike has explained, we have the same way to see if the test has gone right or wrong. We're using the two host um, thing which is mainly one bit at the end with exit code, which makes us see if we are doing great or not. This is standardized. If you have seen risc 5 db or you're seeing, or you have seen spike tests, probably you will, will, you will know this. I mean, this is quite a standardized way, but we use it. So the scripts mainly in CVA6 do this. It ensures that you have some variables set as risk 5 risk 5 is where your toolchain is and also sources a lot of scripts that will ensure that you have all the environment variables set in order to, to execute so mainly you don't have to do anything just hit the one liner and it will be a bash script with sources so your environment will not be affected okay now i have the demonstration of the video which i pro would probably do in a more detailed way not detailed but you will see a little bit how 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 it works on CVS six. Probably you can just skip parts because this is quite of a oh oh yet again we're doing a clone. Probably everyone know knows it, so you can skip a little probably. Okay, so now we have cloned the 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 core fiber reef. We have linked I've linked my my personal later compilation. You don't want to see the compilation. It's awful. It takes a lot of time. We are going to do it. I've linked the, the compilation. It's getting the core. I'm sourcing the same thing that you have seen earlier that does the, the one liners in order to see that you can see everything, how it works. So I, yeah, many bunch of Python requirements, so on. It's the same thing all over again and again. We're getting compliance. We're getting risk 5 db We're getting the risk 5 tests. Everything is being cloned. Okay. Right now we have here the, the, the thing that I have said that it's quite ugly. We are getting for one target, one flavor of CV6. We are using DV simulators that in our case it's VCS, VCS as harness, and we are executing it. It produces a bunch of stuff. It gets, I mean, it sends the host uh, address and so on. So once we're executing, I think it should be quite fast. It gets the linker, everything that's necessary to really compile everything. So Okay, now the simulation has ended. It uh, it hasn't it it did not say anything that went wrong. If not, an error will be like posted in the screen. And now I am saying, bim, oh, yeah, the the lock, an enormous lock, where yeah, this is not. I was going to say to host, but not. Yeah, here we have the to host and the success. The the code that the vent has seen that the to host has been written with a one, which is exit code zero. As Mark has explained. Hello World has, I mean, knows a little bit about the core. So it knows if something goes wrong or not on the CSRs. So now I've changed the, the DV simulators in order to use very later as 
that that's the one that you will need if not that you want to execute without any commercial tool. So it's doing the same. It's compiling under the hood later, and it's executing. Pretty okay, good. now we're seeing the output, Veritas Harness is the same, and Relator. Bunch of Relator things, it's complaining. Relator always complains. And now we see the same thing to host with Relator with zero exit code. So we have successfully run CV6 with VCS and with Relator. 